All right, it's 9.15, and these 30-minute time slots are pretty small for presenting a lot of content, and maybe that's my fault that I said it was a 30-minute talk, but uh, the more I wrote down, the more slides I got, so let's get going. Uh, this is my first time at, at uh, Sousa Labs conference, so this is exciting for me to, to be here, and hopefully this content will be useful to you, so let's... Uh, Move on then. So, um, Git bundles, OBS packaging, how do those two come together at all? Well, um, basically uh, what I do is I uh, work on QMU KVM and uh, we have a QMU package that uh, is a fairly complex package. Um, and we've had tooling in the past related to that, scripting, automation, related to the generation of that package, but uh, it becomes more and more complicated as time goes by, and I'll provide you with those details. Who here is a package maintainer or has done that in the past? Or, Okay, quite a few of you. So my hope is that something here will, help, will be helpful, helpful to you um, and interesting to you, and uh, if we would like to collaborate on this effort uh, in any way, I'd be more than happy to... to to do that with you. Um, what this effort is not is the way to package. I, I, every package is fairly different uh, with what needs it has and you know how, how updates happen to it and those type of things. So I'm not in any way pretending that I found the, the nirvana of packaging here. Uh, it, this is something that I uh, have planned on for a while for QMU, the QMU package, and I believe it's bearing fruit. It's a work in progress today. Um, it's not been highly engineered. I'm learning as I go. I'm not a great shell script uh, programmer, and that's what these, uh, the changes are in. I'm really not great with Git. I've learned a lot, and, um, but uh, it's, it's been fruitful. <clears throat> what it is, as I mentioned, is uh, a desire to improve how we package QMU, uh, how to handle some of the somewhat unique issues that QMU packaging presents. Um, as I mentioned, it's a work in progress. Um, it's not a big effort, but uh, again, hopefully something to where we can share some ideas on uh, whether this is useful beyond QMU. <clears throat> also, I'll just mention it's not a rehash of what's in the paper, so if you've read that, I've tried to provide a little slightly different perspective so that um, uh, this session is not just, you know, reading from that paper. Okay, so what are the issues with uh, how we package QMU today? Believe it or not, it's kind of crazy. The QMU upstream project consists of 25 Git submodules that are part of the tarball that we build the package from. Uh, and that's a lot. I really don't know that there's any other packages like that. Uh, so multiple upstream development repos contribute to, the, to QMU, quite a few. We've even got submodules of submodules of submodules, which is kind of crazy from some of these uh, components that come in. As you probably know, Git submodules can be kind of tricky to work with, <clears throat> especially um, if you're not thinking about what level you're working at and um, managing that correctly. So um, that's another good reason why automation is, is very useful here. Um, I, we have a desire to have just a common, simple way to do our patching, regardless of whether we're talking about the QMU super project or any of those submodules. Today, I think it's six or so of those different submodules that pack that are patched. That changes all the time over time as things evolve. <clears throat> um, so we also, um, given that. We're kind of leading edge with, at least in you know, OpenSUSE, with what we're trying to do, with the latest tools, and of course, you introduce a new compiler, and there's all sorts of breakage because of that with you know, additional checks. So a lot of our patches that we carry privately, at least initially, are related to making sure we can build correctly with you know, the latest tooling. <clears throat> so um, we carry a number of patches for that that aren't upstream, but as things do become upstreamed, we want to switch, switch to the upstream solution. 
Uh, I'll mention that um, until recently, we basically had three, uh, three different spec files because we had QMU split out into different sub-functions of what we build. There's the main QMU uh, function for system emulation. There's QMU Linux user, which is uh, uh, instruction emulation built on top of the syscalls layer, and then a test suite that uh, we package up. So those were all separate spec files, so we had to make sure we could keep all that in sync, all the spec files, all the changes that were made. So I finally got around to saying, well, let's go ahead and use this build services multi-build uh, function. And that's worked out well, but it's made a more complicated spec file because all of those different usages are, have to be represented in a single spec file now. <clears throat> but this is the takeaway here is just um, <clears throat> the need for a good automation in order to um, reduce our complexity of maintaining our package. <clears throat> um, QMU also supports many architectures. I mean, that's kind of what it's design was from day one is like, hey, anyone who wants to emulate an architecture, you know, come do it in QMU. So there's a gazillion different, ar different uh, architectures and, and machine platforms, uh, both on the host that we support building on and, and running on, as well as the emulate, what we're going to emulate. So you've got those two different aspects that come together in the spec file. We're, we're cross com doing cross-compiling from one architecture to the next that we want to support um, firmware on, building firmware on, and uh, being able to run that other architecture. So all of those things, again, add complexity to our packaging. <clears throat> again, an, the need for automation here. Um, and I was going to use my timer to make sure I don't run too long on e each of these slides. <clears throat> okay, and we, we get contributors that are from the drive-by guy who says, hey, I noticed some little thing that I'd like to tweak there and get working better for you. <clears throat> Someone who is doing some of this last, you know, this uh, uh, tooling uh, work and says, well, here, I'll fix this in your package so it works right. All the way to the maintainer who is making more complex changes to the package. We want to support all of those use cases in a user-friendly way that no one is confused about you know, how, to, how to work in QMU and, and, and do the right thing. <clears throat> um, and we've, over, over time, we've, as I said, we've had a workflow that has, has um, used Git and has automated some things, but most people are kind of ignorant of that, so I wanted to simplify and have a, uh, a simple way for them to say, well, I can, I can do this and use that workflow and, and get this done without having learned some crazy stuff that is not of interest to me. <clears throat> We also want to, and I've, we've done this, be able to package the latest upstream Git master on the fly and, and uh, be able to adjust to those changes quickly and package that so that we're aware of what's changing upstream and uh, how that affects our package. So we want to use that same workflow as far as that. So two different use cases, an existing published tarball versus one that we create on the fly and work from. <clears throat> so that's another a goal that we have. <clears throat> QMU is a very active project. It's complex code. It deals with a lot of different layers, hardware emulation, all the way up to all sorts of uh, I.O. interfaces and uh, UI things. So there's a number of security updates that are always being asked uh, that we do. Um, half of our patches that we do are related to security. <clears throat> um, we, you know, stable releases that come, come along that we have to adjust to uh, or take advantage of. Uh, those are things that you know contribute to how active it is. <clears throat> I mentioned that we do use a Git-based workflow for the main QMU code, but all those sub-modules we just kind of have a static list of patches that we've we've used, and that's you know been okay up till a late this recent change where EDK2 has been sucked in, and that's a very complex piece of code, and so we want to simplify <clears throat> working in those sub-modules going forward. <clears throat> Um, at the product milestone check-in time, we kind of have a, a scramble to get changes in, and our current workflow, the handoff between different committers or different people doing a submit request is kind of onerous. <clears throat> we want to simplify that and get rid of the, the problem of we've got people contributing in China versus the U.S. versus Europe, and the handoff that we currently have is problematic with with uh, handing off 
the, the, the package changes. <clears throat> and then additionally, we um, want to do some automation and have our package generation, like I talked about, be automated and have that be as hands-free as possible. So those are some of the needs we have for QMU. Maybe your package deals with some of those as well and you'd like to <clears throat> help automate that. Um, <clears throat> so we're leveraging what we've done, but, but looking for a better solution. <clears throat> um, let's see, I'm gonna try to go faster through here. Please read what I've got here so you don't miss anything that might be useful to you. But um, <clears throat> handling embargoed patches, you know, that's a security concern. So where that patch resides, of course it resides in the package as you, as you add that change. <clears throat> but given that you don't want that to get out to the world, you want to minimize where that is visible. So the, one of the ideas here is to have a repository where you're, maintain, where you're handling those changes <clears throat> that maybe flows with the package as part of the package source. That's this part of this Git bundle idea. So that that's uh, uh, automatically uh, handled together with the actual patch uh, file. Uh, another reason for this choice to use Git bundles. <clears throat> um, okay, so Git bundles helps with all these issues. And, um, <clears throat> oh my gosh, what's that? <laughs> okay, that's what that is. <laughs> so, I flow over here on Delta. So, we have Deltas, which are patches, right? And we have multiple sets of those covering uh, all those different sub-bundles. <clears throat> so I call that a bundle of bundles. That's just a term I came up with. So back to the bo more boring slides. I had to throw in something that wasn't just text here. <clears throat> so what is a Git bundle? Well, it's basically a Git repository that has kind of a special purpose. <clears throat> you can point to it as a Git remote, and you can fetch and pull from it, just like a normal repository you'd get over you know, through the wire, <clears throat> but it's read-only. It's a canned repository. It is what it is. You can't push to it, in other words. <clears throat> uh, it's quite convenient. That's the, that's the whole reason for a Git bundle. It's just a file. It's a repository and a file, easily manipulate, uh, manipulated as far as moving around and easy to give access to. There's no access controls other than, can I access this file? Simple, simple as that. It's quite compact. Here's uh, some statistics from what we do in QMU. <clears throat> the QMU Git repo is 6.3 gig on the disk, which is a pretty big. <clears throat> the actual tarball uh, that QMU plus all these submodules is, is 99 meg compressed. <clears throat> and then the patches that we apply are about 40K in size. Um, and that... Um, is in the con both in the context of the actual patches as text or this Git bundle. It's, it's fairly small, that's the, the main takeaway here. <clears throat> Git bundles, I think, is something useful that really doesn't get used a lot, doesn't get developed a lot upstream. It, it kind of is what it is. It doesn't have to add more bells and whistles added. It, it just does what it's supposed to do. Here's an example of the man page to give you an idea of, of what the functions are, main things that we use is just creating the, the bundle, and then um, some of our scripts use the verify, a way to you know, make sure that if someone's changed this bundle file on us, we can validate that that's a good bundle, that you know, it, it works right, things like that. The other ones are, are, are less useful for our use case. <clears throat> um, so we use a bundle per sub-module plus the super project, uh, QMU, <clears throat> and what I do, to store these bundles is I mimic the actual directory layout of the QMU project and where there's that sub-module in, in my uh, bundle of bundles, I just, at that level, I stick the bundle file there. And I also name the bundle file by uh, the commit, the hash, that that bundle is based on. And it, the, basically the, co the, the sub-module commit ID that you'll you see if you uh, do ls tree uh, on that file. Um, in our case, it's a simple linear tree, so it's got a single head there that, that uh, we 
is the is the top of the patch queue. Um, and for convenience of the scripting, the yeah, I mentioned that the the forty character commit SHA. <clears throat> so, what are the functions or the workflow details of how we go about using this bundle? <clears throat> well, the main thing that you would do if you wanted to use this workflow is you'd say, well, here's the package. It's already, it's already using Git bundles. <clears throat> you can uh, run a command that takes from those bundles to your local, rep local clone of the upstream repositories, and it throws them into a local branch there, all, all of the current uh, set of patches. Um, I call that branch from bundle. And so that's a starting point for you to make any modifications to the list of patches that you want to make. <clears throat> At that point, you basically say, well, I'm done. I've got my patches all ready to go. Whatever changes I wanted to make, I want to push that back out to the patch, or to the package. <clears throat> um, so this next script, get to package, takes from those. Um, and be, basically, we also name an, a, another branch for each of those submodules um, according to this release. So for QMU, for example, we called it OpenSUSE-4.1 for the current 4.1 release of QMU. <clears throat> anyway, it will take that as the starting point, create a brand new bundle file if needed, if there's changes. <clears throat> we also have used a template for the spec file. In other words, we... Uh, you operate on this template file where any other non-patch related changes you want to make to the spec file, you make it in the template, and then these tools, these scripts will just combine those together, the list of patches, that template file, it'll rewrite a list of patches into the spec file. Other modifications related to the tarball, tracking of the version, those things have been automated. <coughs> and uh, it'll also spit out uh, in your changes log, the delta of what patches are added or removed. You, I'm sure, no doubt know that the build service, the, the uh, uh, to, to check in to factory, for example, you've got to you know list changes, and so that we help automate that. <clears throat> Given that some changes that you would want to make aren't to the list set of patches, but just other tweaks to the spec file, we have this refresh function where it says, well, just given a modified. Uh, spec file template, recreate the actual spec file from that. <clears throat> so, and then the final one listed here, I haven't named this because I haven't actually automated this workflow. Um, as I said, this is all a work in progress. <clears throat> Basically, it's important that uh, the maintainer, when, some, when he gets a submit request, he needs to be able to validate that what's being submitted really works, that it's that it follows the um, uh, workflow. And it's a simple thing. We can grab his project, run the same command uh, of um, taking the tarball and, and producing from that the, the spec file changes and um, validate that that is exactly what he's submitting. And if that's the case, good deal. You know, he's used the workflow correctly, which is, is not complicated. And he goes on with the rest of his uh, <clears throat> checking of other aspects of the submit to, 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 before he accepts it. <clears throat> so fairly simple workflow that way. Um, some other details that I'd like to talk about is we have a little config file that lists a number of the package-specific <clears throat> details. Um, what are the names of the remote repo, or what are the, the URLs of those repos that comprise this um, uh, upstream project, the local path on your machine, if we've got local clones of those repos. <clears throat> and that's, um, I'm trying to push away from needing that as much as possible, but that's listed there. <clears throat> Whether you want numbered patches or not, we could also add in adding a SHA as the prefix of uh, these patches, if that's useful, you know, the upstream SHA of the, those patches. Um, the, the, those are quite easy, easily done. Um, so if the tarball changes, like I was talking about, where you want to follow the upstream master closely, uh, <clears throat> we have a, 
uh, uh, automation of check revalidating that what we've got, our set of patches and the, the, the SHAs that we have listed match what's in the tarball and, and um, <clears throat> that we regenerate all of those files automatically. <clears throat> Okay, um, so basically we also want all these scripts to operate to where if, if given all these things and nothing changes, we don't recreate, we don't create new files, we just say, oh, it's a no-op, you know, we can run these commands and it's basically a no-op on the package, so OSC uh, status will show no changes, you know, and you, you, know, you know you're good to go. Uh, and I mentioned that the change log entries get uh, automatically handled. <clears throat> um, Part of this workflow is to add some special tags <coughs> in the patch. So um, some of these were taken from basically how the kernel does their um, tracking of, of uh, their patches. For, so reference, that's kind of a standard. <coughs> that, that would be a bugzilla or a, a fate or a Jira uh, number. <coughs> um, git commit. The upstream git commit if we're carrying that um, in our in our package, <coughs> I've decided to say well if we have a SHA that has all zeros there, that's a way to, to tag that patch as being something that's al almost upstreamed, <coughs> and so that that's a flag for uh, for the maintainer and also possibly for the tools to watch for that to be to, to switch around and get the upstream version. <coughs> the next one there include if. So I mentioned that QMU handles a number of different architectures, and sometimes we've got patches that have to be conditionalized in the spec file, whether or not we apply them or not. There's fairly few of those, but there's places where that's needed. So I've added this tag called include if, which basically is the, the if condition in the spec file that you want surrounding the application of that patch. So in this example, if our ARC32, uh, for example. <clears throat> There's also another case where <clears throat> we have to build something using our, the normal patches that we've applied, but then after it's built, we have to alter its behavior a little bit and build a, a separate executable based on applying another patch that, that changes some things. So I've created this. This, as you can see, there's a patch possibly applied elsewhere, which is a non-defined variable so that it's listed with the patches, it's included as a patch, but we actually reference that somewhere else as you see there on that patch, patch line. We could also do the same thing as calling it a source file. I hadn't done that so far, but I think that would be useful to uh, be able to contribute to the list of sources. <coughs> um, and so that's what that last line is talking about. <coughs> Other things worth mentioning, and I think, wow, I can't believe I'm getting through this on, in time. There's a lot, lot of details to this, <clears throat> but I want to leave a couple minutes for any questions. <clears throat> we we're planning on, uh, I'm planning on having the capability of handling multiple tarballs. There are packages where, you know, it's not quite so simple as you have a single tarball that contributes to building package. <clears throat> also, multiple spec files, as I mentioned. We used to have that, and that, that's still supported in our scripts. <clears throat> um, this, last, this next item here is the idea that without having to clone the upstream repos, we sh there are certain patches that you just create on the fly. Then you're not backporting an upstream patch. It's just something that's you know, easily created on the fly. <clears throat> and that you could do that based on not having to download or have a local, a local repo. Um, so that's a work in progress. <clears throat> it's using some tricks because Git kind of, you know, tracks things carefully. It's using this git replace thing to basically start with the tarball we already have that we know matches a certain thing in, in the upstream repo and basically slam in the, the basis commit that is required to, to, to uh, apply a, the, the, the bundle on top of. <clears throat> and hopefully I'm not abusing that git replace feature. It's kind of crazy but it's part of Git and it's working. <clears throat> okay, we wanna handle the case where the tarball and the Git working tree are not exactly the same. In other words, when the upstream creates the tarball, they do a little bit of additional processing 
So we want to be able to still validate <clears throat> the tarball against the, the Git repo, and we do that by having a delta of those that we've approved and, and can apply. <clears throat> we automatically detect file name collisions. That wasn't a problem when we numbered our patches, but now that we're <clears throat> just using the, the, the subject name, that could happen. <clears throat> so the scripts handle that, or they flag that, let's put it that way. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> since uh, there, there's an issue that, that I've you know, discovered or noted that um, sometimes lots of these sub-modules um, aren't, the, the, the starting commit for them is not something that's published as a head or a tag or anything like that. And so you can't just automatically grab that from a remote repo. <clears throat> um, I, in my case, as, as I get this finished, flushed out, I'm going to see if I can't get those tagged upstream to say, for such and such QMU release, all these sub-modules, all their SAWs uh, need to be tagged so that it, it can be helpful for this kind of a workflow. <clears throat> and the last comment there being, I'm happy to collaborate with anyone on this workflow, make it better, make it more useful, make it more general. <clears throat> I'm hoping to get it to where it's bulletproof and si super simple. As I said, storing the Git bundle in as a source for the package, small file, um, not, not a lot of overhead, and uh, it serves our purposes here. So with that, I think I'm actually on time. Um, yeah, so we've got a, a minute or two here for questions if you're wondering what about this or why did I take that approach? That sounds crazy, or anything like that. <clears throat> okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're supposed to go to the microphone back there. Uh, does that mean that every potential contributor to QEMU needs to use this uh, workflow? for making a submit request? Pretty much. We store these, these shell scripts with the package currently because they're not available otherwise. You know, it's still a work in progress. So it's just a matter of I've got a readme.packaging that describes this so that someone, you know, comes along, they, they hopefully see that file and says, oh, okay, this is the process, and they just follow it. Okay, the readme is there. So that's what, that was my concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've added to the description of QMU, please, you know, we use a Git-based workflow, please follow it, and you know, no one seems to do that. So I'm trying to make it a little more in your face that way. All caps, read me up packaging. <laughs> That's the cost of asking a question, I guess. I suppose if you didn't want to do all this yourself, you could just uh, uh, create a pull request uh, for the uh, Git repository and somebody would then merge it and... Uh, yeah. There's other ways to approach this, certainly. Um, but I'm hoping that this, this is simple enough and works well enough to, to handle it. Um, we'll see. We'll see if... Uh, I'm so far the only one who's used this, and I haven't really made our other QMU uh, maintainers or contributors walk through this process, and we'll have to see you know, how, it, how well it works. But what, what, what we do today with our uh, handoff of a common repo and um, being able to make sure that you know, their changes are pushed out, out there and then we, you know, everyone, the next guy syncs those and yeah, it's, it's, be, it's kind of problematic. Basically, once the submit request is uh, accepted, everyone has, that, has the current repo available in their own uh, local um, copy of the of the package. One uh, more question, I guess, because time's about. Do you have that. any experience of that workflow with the uh, Bexilla numbers that we need to have in the change logs that we may miss from one branch to the other? Yeah, that's uh, that's why it's stored with the pack with the patch, right? We've got that reference stored with the patch, and we suck those out into the change log. But when, then, when the pack, the, the, you get the, the newest master from upstream, uh, you may not have that <coughs> comment in, in that line in the, uh, in the commit. Right, 
but but but, so but we've processed that? the delta, right? We're processing the delta from the old to the new, and we know what's come come and gone, and so we we could still reference those in you know as we update to us to a stable release, we can say these these things are incorporated in the stable release. Okay, thank you for your attention.